Welcome everybody, this is my video guide telling you how to install Visual Studio at home. The reason I'm doing this guide is because we've had issues over the years uh, with students being able to uh, install this. So I thought I'd give you this guide so there's more chance you'll be able to install it successfully. It's because of those issues that I'm using the laptop I am. So please bear that in mind in, in terms of your commentary about the browser I use and the desktop background I've got. To begin installing Visual Studio, if you do a search in Chrome for the software, and it should be the second hit uh, going towards a Microsoft site, and if you have a look for the different versions, we want the Express versions more to the point we want the Express 2010 products because they are free. As you can see in the 2010 editions you have options of uh, installing versions which are sp specific to particular programming languages. So for example the first option here is for C++ which is an intermediate language which is quite sophisticated and you can develop a great deal with it including games. Another option available is C Sharp which is becoming very popular in terms of business applications and down here we've got the Visual Basic Edition this version it's much more accessible so it's the one we're going to be using as you begin to learn how to program if you just look underneath this one though there's a web developer edition for creating particular websites and there's an express version for creating windows phones well applications for windows phones but if we just go to the 2010 visual basic edition and as you can see here, we've got a language options. Uh, and we've also got an install now. So if we go for that. And we want to save it. After saving it, we'd like to run it. And yes, we do want to allow it to make changes. Uh, in my case, I don't mind sending my information to Microsoft, so I'll keep that ticked, and then we'll go to next. And yes, of course, I've read that, even though nobody at all ever does. Do we want the additional projects? SQL Server is a program you use for creating databases, particularly databases that work in conjunction with the programming setup that we're about to start exploring. In this case, to make this a faster install, uh, I'm not going to pick that option. So we'll just go for Next. And as you see, it's installing and getting program files in the win in the x86 section, which means this is a 32-bit installation of Windows. And as you see, we have enough space, and it doesn't take up a great deal of size, only 115 megabytes. <coughs> if we now click Install, and as you can see, these are the various components which are part of Visual Studio including these are all systems that if you think of them in terms of protocols these are all separate agreed ways of behaving which are all part of the Windows system after quite a long installation progress you'll be presented with this screen <clears throat> and if you read this information here it says it's been successfully installed and it also offers the chance to visit Microsoft Update to download latest service packs and security updates. 
This, I think, is possibly one of the issues people have in installing this software, in that their version of Windows isn't quite up to date. So I'm going to follow this link and see what happens. And as it says, says on my screen, there are several updates that need to occur. I'm going to click the install updates and then wait for that process to finish. Then we'll pick it up with the rest of the installation. After installing all your updates, at this stage you now want to exit from this screen. And if you go into the start menu and all programs, if you scroll down here you'll find Microsoft Visual Studio 2010 Express. If we click on that folder, we'll see two different links here. We want to be picking the one that says Visual Studio uh, 2010 Express. As you'll see if you've been following along the first time use of this software, it takes a very long time to start up. And you might have seen the, at the start screen, it also said that this was a valuation version of the software. Uh, the way you make this free to use, if if you go into the help menu and go to register product and it says here we have we can obtain a registration key online. So we follow that link and here you can sign in with a Microsoft account. Uh, those of you who've got an Xbox 360 may already have one you want to use. If you haven't got one you need to go into this option, uh, find out more about it and register for a Microsoft account idea which is free and uh, relatively easy. If we move back to Visual Studio and close this we want to go to File, New Project and we'll see we have various options here. Uh, if we can see we've got a Windows Forms applications and these are elements where we use a GUI uh, which is a graphic user interface. You are creating things like message boxes which have a visual element and also have some text behind them. Some of the other ones are uh, browser applications, class library, WPF application but the one we're most interested in is a console application and this is because this uses entirely code and it's code in particular that, that we want to get to know. So if you double click there or press OK it will start us up for our possibly first experience of using this. And as you see you're immediately presented with some code on the left. And if you have a look here in Solution Explorer this is where all of the elements of the project you're building are stored and where you can have access to them. The only one that we're using at the moment is this which is called Module 1 VB and it's just this one window area where we're putting code. If you see here we've got properties here which can become relevant depending on what you use. They're particularly using Windows Forms applications as we talked about before. To test that our install of Visual Studio is working we're just going to do a very simple program which has been a tradition for over 40 years now in programming circles. We're going to write a, a console that says hello world. So to do that we're going to use a name called console and as you'll see there as I'm typing there's a system called IntelliSense which is predicting what I'm writing. So if I just I could finish typing that or I can just double click there and it will finish it for me. Next we want to full stop. Then if I press W as you can see you sometimes make errors while you're typing. If we go back to where we had W and press R and here we go, it's presenting us with write line, which is the option we want. This means it's going to write something to the console. After that, if we have brackets and a quote mark and type hello world, end quote mark, end brackets. And if we run this, 
you might not have been able to see it, but it very briefly said, hello world. What we need to do to stop it from running and then stopping again is to do a second line which has console read line. And that means it's not only written, but we actually have an opportunity to read what was outputted. So if we go up to play here, which is where we'll start our debugging process and see if everything works. And there we go, there's a very simple program. One thing I'd like to take the opportunity to talk about now is saving work. If you go into File and Save It As, if you give this a meaningful name, I'm going to call this one Hello World, you're much more likely to be able to find it in the future. So if we save that, and there we go, and as you see it's reflected up there. Uh, one note about saving is, as well as using meaningful names, save different versions of the programs you're working on, because it makes it much easier to recover if you put some code in that hasn't quite worked. You can perhaps go to an earlier version sometimes and then try developing again. And that's it. Thanks for listening, everyone.